adversity, one and one, 1984-85, invades the territory of the undefeated Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Hello, everybody. I'm Chuck Marlowe, along with John Laskowski. And, John, let me ask you, this enthusiasm of 11,395 in the Convocation Center has to really mean something to the freshmen for Indiana. I'll tell you, it sounds like a lot more than 11,000 here. You can just hear as both teams come on the floor. This is a great place to play. Uh, I got a chance to play here twice to Indiana. Notre Dame and Indiana really have a big rivalry going now. This is an old home week for you, is it not? It sure is. It's going to be back up here. I've seen a lot of friends. But uh, I think we're going to see a great game. Notre Dame has played well. They're 3-0 and and handled Northwestern pretty well last week. Indiana struggled early, but they're coming on strong now. There's a great matchup here tonight, actually a matchup of a few years back, two years ago almost, next January. Steve Alford and Scott Hicks of Notre Dame matched up when they were in high school. Hicks playing with Cathedral and Alford with Newcastle. Alford started out a little weak in that first game against Louisville. Came on pretty strong. Uh, he's averaging 20 and a half points. All right, Steve's going to have to play well for us. He's really becoming the team leader, even though he's only a sophomore as far as controlling the ball. Stu Robinson's not here today because of injuries, so Steve's going to have to play hard. Scott Hicks's role with Notre Dame, what's it going to be, John? He's really come on strong, averaging over 14 points a game. He's a second-leading scorer besides Kempton. Uh, Kempton's a little hurt today, so they're going to count on Hicks quite a bit. And just like in the uh, Hall of Fame Classic down in Newcastle a couple years ago, these two kids will be going at it today. All right, you can see it's an intense rivalry. Dates back many, many years, and we'll be back to check the starting lineup for you in just a minute. I grew up in held a lifetime of love and hope and wonderful memories. Now I'm buying a home for my family to grow up in. Got the mortgage where Dad went. American Fletcher. Get your mortgage from the bank that puts more people in more homes than any bank in Indiana. American Fletcher. The advantage is yours. American Fletcher, thanks for the memories. This buds for everyone who scrapes it, sprays it, and lays it on smooth. Just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. This Bud's for you. Well, there you get a panoramic view of this uh, great ANC center, Indiana, uh, to the basket nearest you. Notre Dame will be going away from this camera position. John, uh, the Irish have a, a very highly rated ball player. We'll probably be talking a great deal about him tonight. And he's from Jersey City, New Jersey, a freshman, six feet tall, David Rivers. He's number four. And I understand this young man can do just about everything. They want the ball in his hands as much as possible. He's a very quick player, he likes to get the ball on an outlet pass, bring the ball up the floor, and really sets the Notre Dame fast break offense. Uh, by fast break, I mean bring it down, see who that open man is, and a lot of times get him with a behind the back pass or a through the leg pass. So Indiana defensively has got to pick him up right at midcourt and put pressure on him so he can't get that fast break offense started. Now a big question mark for the Irish tonight at the free throw line right now at the Irish end number 41 Tim Kempton. Tim if you remember most of you fans who followed the Irish last year was plagued by a stress fracture of the right leg and he missed uh, nine games they lost six of those games the Irish did while he was out. Well he recovered from that came back and then on the Northwestern contest got into an altercation under the basket. Nothing uh, anything less than good physical contact for a rebound and he has come out now with a an alleged stress fracture of his left leg and a sprained right ankle. So this young man number 41 Tim Kempton is questionable tonight. Jim Dolan number 42 has missed the first three games for the Irish with uh, what they call a it, it would be called a hip pointer if it were in the hip but it's a very deep bone bruise of the left shoulder and this will be the first action that he has seen in the season. Notre Dame 3 and 0 they won their first game against Manhattan then defeated Northwestern and came back last Saturday to Handley defeat St. Francis of Pennsylvania. Indiana has split its first two games losing to Louisville 75 64 and the defeating Ohio University 92 73 last Saturday. Digger Phelps is looking for his 258th victory at Notre Dame in 14 years. Bob Knight his 298th win in 14 years at Indiana and his 400th overall victory. 
We're set for the starting lineups. Let's go to our public address announcer. Now we understand that uh, it's going to be just a slight delay. The initial lineup that was given to us to start tonight would be Donald Royal, Jim Dolan, Tim Kempton, David Rivers, and Scott Hicks. Let's check it. University. At forward, 6'8 and a junior. From Newark, Ohio, number 41, Mike Giome. At forward, 6'5 and a senior. From Merrillville, Indiana, number 11, Dan Dockage. Center, 6'8 and a sophomore from Oshkosh, Wisconsin, number 30, Todd Meyer. John, this probably will be the same lineup we saw against Ohio. At guard, 6'4 and a senior from Anderson, Indiana, number 21, Winston Morgan. I think we'll see Winston start out on uh, David Rivers to start the game. At guard, 6'2 and a sophomore from Newcastle, Indiana, number 12, Steve Alford. And Steve is averaging 20 and a half points per game over two games. 1962 Ohio State graduate in his 14th year, Bob Knight. The starting lineup for your fighting Irish. Forward, six, seven, and a sophomore from New Orleans, Louisiana. Number 15, Donald Royal. Forward, six, eight, and a junior from Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Number 42, Jimmy Dolan. Center, 6'10 and a junior from Indianapolis, Indiana. Number 44, Penny Barlow. At guard, 6'3 and a sophomore from Indianapolis, Indiana. Number 10, Scott Picks. At guard, 6 feet and a freshman from Jersey City, New Jersey. Well, there you have it, the starting five for each team, and I'll tell you right now, this enthusiasm is something that you and I, John, have not experienced in broadcasting for a couple of years. We were not up here the last time. We did not do this game uh, the last time Indiana was here at Notre Dame. I think this is also, we forgot to mention Ken Barlow from Indianapolis. He'll be the starting center. They list him now 6'10", 220 pounds at a junior. Uh, he's going to be a big force inside for Notre Dame today. Indiana is going with a somewhat uh, shorter lineup, and this is uh, due to the fact that Bob Knight has been somewhat displeased by the play in the early season of Bube Plop. Plop, 7-2 senior from Munich, Germany, so he's opted to go with this one. At one time, I believe, that we saw against Louisville, uh, starting uh, instead of Meyer in the middle, he started Darrell Thomas. So Coach Knight, uh, uh, for the first time this year, has duplicated his starting lineup. It will be Alfred and Morgan, Giomi, and Meyer at center with Dockage in the corner. Depending on how the rebounding goes early in the game, I think will determine how soon Uve may enter the game. If Notre Dame uh, is doing a good job on the, on the boards, Indiana may have to counter by putting Uve in there for some board uh, strength. John, you grew up not too, too far from here. You and uh, your counterpart at Indiana University, Tommy Abernathy, went to St. Joseph's High School. There are the officials, Hank Nichols, Joe Forty, and Paul Hausman. They are all ACC officials. And there's the starting lineup for Indiana. In just a moment, we will see the comparable matchups for Notre Dame, and then you'll get an idea as soon as the tip. There it is. Royal and Dolan, Barlow at the center, Hicks and Rivers at the guards. Imagine we'll see immediately Steve Alford. Alford is, uh, he will probably match up against Hicks, but we'll wait and see. There you are. 47 other times, 46 other times, including this one, the 47th meeting of these two teams. And the tip is controlled by Notre Dame. Royal gets it, and they get it right away to Rivers. Rivers with Morgan. 
Down to Hicks, there's Alford in front of him. At the line, there's Barlow. Steps in, takes the shot hard off the glass. The rebound will come to Morgan. So the first effort of the basket by Barlow by Notre Dame is hard off the glass. Now Indiana, looking for the patience of its offense, will get its first opportunity. Dockage missing. Rebound controlled by the Irish. To Rivers right up the middle. Notre Dame breaks it back quickly. Loose ball, and we have a turnover. First against the Irish. That's what Notre Dame likes to do on offense. Get the ball to Rivers, let him come up the floor. Giomi did a good job of putting pressure on him. Winston Morgan was right there at half court to pick him up, and it forced Rivers into the turnover. Dockage and Morgan in the back. Morgan. Now Dan looking underneath comes out to Meyer on the side. Notre Dame in a box and one defense. Four players in his own. Scott Hicks guards Steve Alford man for man. Out of bounds, last touch. Well, it looked as if Dockage had a hand on the ball. And there was a battle for it underneath with Donald Royal, and it appeared that Royal might have touched it last. Anyway, Indiana's ball. And Alford, this is the first time he's handled the ball. There you see Hicks on him, man for man. He passes the ball, and Hicks stays with him, but yet the other four players in his own. Giomi from the corner. Oh, that's a quick release for Mike Giomi. And Indiana takes the early lead, 2 nothing. We have played a minute and a half. Hicks with the drive, shut off. Barlow from outside, it's good. And a momentary pause in the action for the traditional throwing of the confetti and uh, what have you on the court. And this will probably be the last appearance that you see about. They all stood on the first Irish basket. Now look, Dolan is playing off Morgan, denying Morgan the pass to the help side of the floor. Dockage. Morgan stepped up. They wanted to take the shot, he won't shoot. Jomi baseline move. It is good. Alfred set the pick that time. Mike looked like he was going to stop for that jump shot. Nobody came to pick him up. He drove all the way to the basket. Rivers. There's Barlow. Barlow very quick for 6'10. Meyer's going to have his hands full. Picks inside, drives, misses, rebound, and there's Dockage. Dockage at 6'5, pulling that off the board. He's guarding Royal. A big height disadvantage, but he just that block out well, came up with that rebound. Bounce inside. Morgan misses the shot. Not too good a shot. Rivers, look how quickly he breaks it up court. The foul. picked up very quickly that time. Morgan took the shot at the other end, so now he's behind, and Rivers goes right by him. So now, Meyer and Dockage have to pick him up. They stop him, do a good job, but Alfred's momentum carries him into Rivers. First foul of the game. Barlow and Hicks, teammates in Cathedral, exchange the ball on the top. Now Hicks to the right side, down to Rivers in the corner. They take the baseline away from him. Royal back on top. The Irish move that ball. It will fall. And Scott Hicks has his first two. We're tied at four. Half court trap by Notre Dame. And Indiana's been able to break it. And then they go right into the box and out. Hicks still on out for man to man. January 15th, these two matched up at four. The shot is no good. Alfred forced it from outside. David Rivers, six foot freshman, Jersey City, number four, Dolan, trapped in the corner. Barlow drives off the glass, no good. Back up and a foul, the basket will count, and credit it to Donald Royal. Inside position to Royal. And Mike Giomi picks up the personal. Here's the drive by Barlow. There you see Dockage at a high disadvantage. Giomi didn't go back in against Royal on the blockout. Royal snuck around for the rebound. Donald Royal has put the Irish in front. Six to four, and now the missed free throw off in the hands of Hicks. Scott Hicks. David Rivers. Quick little stutter step. Almost shakes his man. Now back to Dolan. Dolan at 6'8". The 
by far strongest looking player on the court. And Dolan Travis shuffles that back foot before he made the drive. Good defense so far by Morgan. When Rivers gets the ball at the point, he wants to fake one way, go the other, and get inside in that blue area. If Morgan can keep Rivers out of the blue area, that really hurts Notre Dame's offense. That second turnover against Notre Dame. Morgan has to pick his dribble up. Here's the press. Dockage now working it across the line. Morgan all alone in the corner of the Meyer. Dockage. Baseline Giomi. Two more. Mike Giomi. They're going to have to take that away from him, John. Giomi was open right under the basket twice in that segment, but the defense was between him and the ball. He finally moved out to the baseline and got the open shot. Winston Morgan with his hand for the night. Scott Hicks. And in the matchup between Hicks and Alfred, Hicks gets the first two. He has four. Notre Dame set a down screen that time. Steve's got to be able to get over that. Once Hicks gets the ball, it's a lot easier for him to shoot over Steve. Steve's got to put the defense on him before he gets the ball. Notre Dame 8-6. to six. Morgan, it's good. Winston has to, John, get confidence in that shot again. Good ball movement by Indiana so far in the game. They've taken the ball to the baseline, swung it around. Notre Dame hasn't recovered quick enough and has left Indiana some open shots. Now Notre Dame working to try to get the lead back again. It's no good. Off the rim by Royal and Giomi, who realizes that he has probably used up a step and can't put the ball down, gets it out quickly. The doctor. Morgan feeds Giomi, and that's goaltending off the glass. Count the two. Mike Giomi has eight already on a good, strong move to the basket, and we have a timeout. You're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. It's Indiana 10, Notre Dame 8. $4.50? Too much. $4? Too high. $3.50? I'll give you a buck seventy-five. Come on, Tom, it's worth at least three dollars. A buck seventy-five, Virgil. Take it or leave it. Okay, a buck seventy-five. Notre Dame's four of eight. Both teams shooting well. Rebounds Indiana with three. Notre Dame has five. We were told before the game. Jim Gibbons, who is on the other side of us over here uh, with Notre Dame, says that the Irish this year are a very hard board crashing team. Kempton, when he's in there, very strong on the boards when he's healthy. But if you notice, Barlow, Royal, both go in very hard on the inside. Dolan, with, this is our first chance to see him. And the Irish's first chance, really, fan-wise, to see him. But he's a gorilla. He's a good-sized man. 6'8", 225, a really strong frame. Notre Dame's three-point play came on a rebound. Uh, Indiana has to control the rebounding and Rivers bringing down the floor. So far, they've controlled Rivers well. Well, Indiana has good support up here tonight. Ted Kitchell and Glenn Grunwald sitting back behind us, plus a lot of fans. Buckshot O'Brien and his son Randy are here tonight as well. David Rivers takes the shot. It won't fall. Hicks up off the glass. It's no good. And there's Dockage along with uh, Mike Giomi. And Dockers turns it over. Did not get the pass off, left his feet, and was called for travel. All right, there you see Coach up telling you, shot with your feet. He picked the ball up too soon without anything to do. Notre Dame collapsed on the man he was throwing to and caused a turnover. Well, let's watch Rivers and Morgan for a moment. Barlow with a little ball fake. Yomi didn't take it. Barlow, no. Barlow moves the ball very well for a 6'10 center. Double team in the corner. Rivers now has to look for room to get it out. There's Dolan Barlow. He's a good outside shooter. This one doesn't go. Morgan, Dockage. Morgan, top of the key. And that's not a good percentage shot. Off it's pulled. Here come the Irish. A little too quick, and maybe three or four more passes uh, get a step or two closer in for Winston. Hicks, no good. Tipped away, Alford out with the ball, tipped away, and kicked. Saved in the corner, the Irish really hustling after that ball. Here's Rivers. Royal wants to set a screen, Rivers doesn't take it. Double team, here's a feed on the backside. Good, good look by Royal, and they found Scott Hicks. Now, 
Now, Indiana really slipping a little out of pace, John. That's that a bad pass and turnover. Half-court trap by Notre Dame, and that's the first turnover they've gotten on it. Just passed over Jomi's head. Indiana three, turnovers, Notre Dame with two now. We're at the 12.58 mark of the first half of the Athletic and Convocation Center on the campus of Notre Dame. And the score is tied 10 and 10. Good play by Todd Meyer tying the ball up. The alternate possession gives the ball to Indiana. That's Notre Dame's third. Uh, they have three turnovers now for Notre Dame. Both teams really doing a great job of hustling out there. I think conditioning will play a part in this game uh, when we get to the second half. Dockage steps up. Two. Notre Dame stayed in that box and one. They've held Alford down, but they've given up a lot of open shots to the rest of the players. So far, Indiana's made them. But now, is it up to Indiana to look for that shot all the time, John? I can't go to Alford if he's not going to be open. The other guys are, are able to hit that 15-footer if it's open. That's the fourth turnover against Notre Dame. So Indiana with a 12-10 lead gets the ball back. Let's see what they can do with it. John? In Indiana's got to keep that pressure on that man-to-man -man defense. Four turnovers early. Uh, that's good defense. Gets the Indiana the ball without giving up a shot. And Giome leans back on it. Here's Dockage. Drops it off Dolphy. The shot won't fall. Foul. It'll be called on Scott Hicks, his first. You notice the left thigh of Alford is still bandaged. Kai bruise that he picked up in uh, practice last week, and then John and I have noted as you look at it again. One-on-one -on -one move, feels an opening, and heads right toward the basket. Not a good percentage shot, but he, he felt that Hicks would be on him, and of course he's 11-11 from the free throw line this year. Rolls it across the rim. It's his first point. Indiana's a three-point lead. Digger Phelps up trying to mark out the defensive assignments. Now you see the lane switches. Hicks and Rivers moving to opposite sides. And the second finds nothing but net. Alford has two. Indiana, four-point lead, their largest of the game. Interesting statistic we were just given. There's a foul. It's going to be called on Morgan. Help from uh, Mike Giome. Points on turnovers, and Indiana holds the margin, John, 6-2. to two. Especially when you can get a fast break after that turnover. Let's take a look at Morgan, see how low he is. But Rivers is able to get around him. Now we got to have some help inside. Giome comes over to try to deflect the shot. Rivers, 75% shooter at the charity line. Not that good from the field. Only averaging 33%. And we were told it's not that he cannot hit the shot, but his shot selection through the first three games has not really been that good. Takes a deep breath and sends it on its way. Chance to pull the Irish within two, and he does. Buzzer sounds. We have a timeout here at the ANC Center. You're watching Indiana basketball at the ANC Center in South Bend. Chuck Marlowe with John Laskowski in South Bend, Indiana. John, uh, Uwe Flop has checked in the lineup for Todd Meyer. The initial indication would be that he would be assigned to cover their big man, Kent Barlow. But Ken Barlow is very, very quick afoot. It'll be interesting to see who uh, matches up now for Indiana. So far, Chuck, exactly the kind of game we expected to see. Both teams hustling, uh, going after some rebounds. Indiana 6 of 10 from the field at 60%. Notre Dame has slipped now, 5 of 13, just 38%. Rebounds are even. Uh, Notre Dame with four turnovers, Indiana three. Indiana 14-12, a two-point lead with 11.53 left in the first half. It's been a good one. Good fake by Alford. Drops it off. Giomi will fire scores. Giomi with a good assist from Alford, but Mike is ready to shoot. He is getting his feet ready. He knows that uh, if Alford gets double teamed, he's going to dish it off, which he did there. Here's Barlow, and he's dead eye from outside. Now, there you saw Uve on Barlow. Royal comes down to set the pick, and Uve was not able to get out quick enough, so Barlow may be able to score from the outside. Cross court to Giomi. Holds up the drive. Barlow very quick to recover. Inside the block. Makes the fake. Up off the glass and good. That shows he did a good job of posting that time, John. Uve moved across the lane. Was open on the left side. The ball was reversed, so he came with it. Had the ball. Good movement on his feet. He didn't travel that time. Got himself ready. Went up for the layup. Right, now you see him out on Barlow. 
Now look at Barlow, a little stutter step, tries to use the screen set up by Royal. Loose ball, picked up. That's another turnover. That's unofficially the sixth. Underneath the Gioni, back to Doc, is good feed. Morgan had a little trouble with the ball that time. It was a three on one. So Winston brought Rivers out. Did a great job. By the time he threw the pass to Gioni, it was over his head. A dish back to Doc is for the basket. 2010-14, Indiana's largest lead. Barlow outside, it won't fall. And the rebound to Giomi. When you get Barlow off the board, that opens the board up a little bit, Jack. Morgan, Giomi, now he's outside. Let's wait until he moves under. Alter. Oh, he's really been throttled by Hicks. Morgan, no good. Won't fall. Rebound to Royal. Here come the Irish, a chance to cut that lead to four. Saved by Giomi, good hand. Notre Dame brought the ball over its head that time. Giomi made the steal. It looked like it was on the baseline. The referee right there said it did not go out of bounds. Dockey really getting pounded underneath. Rivers is playing in a close game. Alford. Hicks moves out on Alford now to block him. He's fouled. Reaching through his Dolan. That's the first foul on Dolan. John, nice statistics. That's only the second foul against Notre Dame. Indiana's run their offense now to put Uve on one side and Alford. So Uve comes down, set the pick, lets Alford go outside, and then they play a little two-on-two. -two. Alford throws the ball right back into Uve. Notre Dame on the foul. 2014 Indiana right through Block's legs. Out it comes Riz Rivers. Dan driving on the right side. Makes the feed. Good block. Good defensive play. Offensive foul against Barlow. Rivers really does a good job of bringing the ball up. Digger Phelps can't believe that call. But that's how dangerous he can be. He sees his teammate there, gets the ball to him at the last second. Looks like the ball fell out of Hicks's hand, came high off the board. Barlow with the foul from behind. John, I think Mike Giomi once again made a stellar play. Looking underneath to Giomi, turns, misses, gets his own rebound, he's fouled. And Barlow over the top, his second foul. One thing, and, and I know maybe I labor a little bit as we watch this, watch, and this will point it out. He steps right in for the shot. Even before the ball's at the rim, he's right inside there with good position, and Barlow with two quick fouls. Outside to Morgan. We have 9.14 left in the first half. It's Dockage, Morgan, Blop in the middle, Giomi, and Alford. Alford swinging on the baseline, trying to shake loose from Scott Hicks. Turned by Blop. No good. Well, the Notre Dame bench wanted to follow Giomi going for the ball. There was no call. 8.54. Price in the lineup. Shot is good by Jim Dolan. Dolan's first two. Mixed up on defensive assignment that time. Left Dolan open on the baseline. Defensively for Notre Dame now. The last time they had Joe Price starting Uve. That's why Indiana went inside. Price only 6'5". Now he's out on Morgan. Joe Price, a junior from Marion, Indiana, as Dolan gets beaked off his feet by Giome with 12 points already in the first half. Giome's hustling around for that inside position and really does a good job of getting open. The players have been able to get him the ball. Whistle. Rivers going up. Giome makes the foul. And that's a costly mistake. Giome at 6'8", Rivers at 6 feet. John, you pointed out that even last week, that much of a height mismatch, he does not need to leave his feet no, until that ball's out of the hand. Stand there, he looks like he's leaning to the right. See how high an arch he had to shoot anyway. Let him take that shot. He's been having trouble with those kind of shots. And now you got an easy uh, uh, free, two free throws now. You'd much rather have that pressure to give him that 10-footer. Don't get him up to the free throw line. Marty Simmons in for Dan Dockage. Here's Rivers. Three for three. Averages 11 points per game. And now, substitution, Gary Bose, D-O-C-E. 6'9", freshman from Corona, New York. In the lineup, replacing Barlow, who takes a breather with two fouls. And four points. Here's Rivers. Dan sends it on its way. It's good. Rivers has four. The Irish have 18 and trail by four. 22 to 18. Pressure. Loose ball as 
Morgan tried to dribble it through the traffic. Up and drops it through David Rivers, his first field goal. That's how quick Rivers is. Morgan thought he was already around him and still caused a turnover. Probably too many dribbles, too much. Winston needed to pick it up and make a pass. Morgan fires from outside, no good. Double jam underneath on Blop, and here come the Irish. They can tie it. Rivers, two balls. Indiana having trouble handling this press. Up it comes to Giomi, holds it up. Morgan, listen to this crowd. With seven and a half minutes left in the first half. Blob into Blob, back out to Morgan. To Blob, hook. It won't fall. And the Irish have the rebound and a chance to take the lead. Punch from the corner. Digger Phelps off the bench, really motioning Notre Dame to get that ball down offensively, and they're taking the first open shot they get. They've made three in a row and now lead by two. Four, 22, eight straight points for the Irish. Simmons, Giomi, good move by Giomi, up, oh, it is good. Mike Giomi really hustling. He's done a great job inside. That time he really looked to try to get that shot, went for the fake, and made it again. We're tied at 24. Six and a half minutes left. First half action, Athletic and Convocation Center. Tipped away. And now Alford on a loose ball, tipped around. Bob Knight is up. Offensive foul on Steve Alford. Jim Dolan, well, if we could see it again, it's an offensive call, and it could have gone either way. We have a timeout here at the AMC Center. You're watching Indiana basketball in South Bend, Indiana, where the score is tied. Notre Dame 24, Indiana 24 game that we expected to see John it's not easy at any time for an Indiana team to win in South Bend and this game is tied 24-24 Rivers really got into the flow of the game the last three or four possessions for Notre Dame you hear how how loud the crowd gets and he really adds a lot to the game when he's able to bring the ball up not necessarily score but get the ball to the man who can Dockage, Dan Dockage from Merrillville, Indiana, back in the lineup for the Hoosiers, replacing Winston Morgan. There you get a look at the Indiana bench. There's Steve Alford called for that last foul on the charge. Indiana, 10 of 19 for 52.6%. Notre Dame, 9 of 21, about 43%. Notre Dame still controls the boards 12 to 10. with the ball and handling the ball this time on the top is number 23 number 22 Joe Duck the shot outside is no good rebound to Giomi and here comes Dockage Dockage is a spot player whistle blocking foul against Indiana Uve came to set the back screen to get Alfred in the offense the referee said he did not have his feet set and the foul call I was talking about Dockage being a spot player, not meaning that, that he is in and out of it, but more from the standpoint of his stamina. He needs a little rest occasionally. Here's Price from outside. Joel Price from Marion, Indiana. Deadly from 15 to 17 feet, and he shows it right there. Marty Simmons against the press, breaks it, gets it up court from Dockage. 26-24, inside, over the backboard, last touch by Notre Dame. It'll be Indiana's ball. Not a good pass by Simmons, good defense by Notre Dame, and Dockage would not have gotten the pass if Notre Dame had not knocked it out of bounds. That pass was intended to on the inside release. Here's a loose ball, out of bounds. It's going to be whose ball? Indiana ball? Looks like it went off a Notre Dame player's head. Had trouble getting that inbounds pass in here. They set up again. Simmons out of bounds. Well, Indiana just not executing well on that inbounds. There's no one near that pass. Shot from the top by Duff. It's no good. And a scramble for the ball and a loose ball by Hicks. We were told before the game 
that Hicks will get in low to sort of stand there and pick up what we used to call garbage. And that, that was just in a loose ball, and he was in the perfect position. Good play by Scott Hicks. 28-24, Notre Dame. Leading by four. Around the top. Simmons will take it. Banged off the glass. And a foul. And will stay where? Well, 50, and that would be Marty Simmons, Jeffersonville, Illinois. A little off balance on the shot. Uve goes for a tap there. And on the rebound on Price, it looked like Simmons called for pushing off. And then Indiana over the limit, so Price will be at the line. Uh, Indiana is over the limit. And that will send Notre Dame to the line. Four points has been their largest lead. And a chance to add two more as Joe Price, 6'5 from Marion, a junior, will have the one and one. He's a 60% shooter, puts the first on his way. It's good. Hicks did a good job of getting around Dockett. Tracy hits 10. He makes a move around the inside and was right in position for that rebound. Now Dockett's handled it. Joe Price has both into the one and one. We have a substitution. Dan Rivers back in for Duff. Dan Duff in just long enough to get Rivers the breather. Dockett to Simmons to Giomi and offered in perfect position. Bob Giomi. Here's Dan Rivers on the steal. He is so quick. He has 10 points, and Indiana wants timeout. We have a timeout in South Bend. You're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Notre Dame leads the Hoosiers 32-24. In this last spurt, has lost the scoring duel 16-2. All right, now here is the scoring. Right now, for Indiana, it's going to be a junior and... One, two, three, four freshmen. We have Todd Meyer, Joe Hillman in the lineup from Glendale, California. Brian Sloan, number 45, from McLeansboro, Illinois. Delray Brooks, number 23, from Michigan City Rogers. And Cree Smith, number 42, from Tipton, Indiana. And it'll be the freshman to handle the ball. It's Joe Hillman. And Hillman double teamed in the backcourt. There's the trap, loose ball, and Rivers puts it right above the glass. A clean steal. Cree Smith, up to Sloan. Sloan, look at Rivers, he just chases all around. Now the Todd Meyer off his knee. Meyer looking back into the middle before he had the ball. Great pressure by Notre Dame on a three-quarter court trap. There you see the Notre Dame bench, they're very excited. 34, 24, a 10-point bulge as the Irish have really taken it to Indiana. Knocked away, it's out of bounds off Rivers' foot. It'll be Indiana's ball. Delroy with a tough job on Rivers now, but he handled it the first time down the floor, moved his feet very well. Here you see him. He's keeping his hands away, and there it goes off his foot. Now Delray has to work it up. A triple trap. And they give it to Hillman. Hillman has not been effective at shooting through the first couple of games, but he is a great shot. Led Southern California in scoring at Glendale High last year. Here he is, top of the key, and it's no good. Brooks puts it up. It's no good. The net, the net is off the rim, and we have a foul. One and one, Delray Brooks uh, has committed first, but we have a loose net. That's the east basket. Brooks has called for his first personal. Well, John, you're the only logical person here to ask this question. Why would Coach Knight make a platoon substitution well, the, such as that? The real flow of the game at 16 points for Notre Dame, two for Indiana, had completely swung the other way. Uh, Coach took the time out to go over that situation with the team. There you see it, 18 to two now. And then get these, uh, get five new kids in the game, try to get the flow of the game changed back a little slower pace. Ken Barlow. I remember two years ago, well, it's more than that now, three years ago when he made his announcement that he was going to attend Notre Dame. 
at all of Indianapolis and about 200 other colleges and universities around the nation. Really on their, on the edge of their seats, wondering where he was going to go. Barlow with a reckless third foul there, reaching around. That is only the 15th foul against the Irish. We have a substitution. Royal is back in, and Barlow will sit out the rest of the first half with three and a half minutes remaining. And now Smith inbounds. And so watch to see what Indiana can do with the ball. Knocked away, there's a foul. Scott Hicks reaching around. John, it just appears that Notre Dame is so quick at reaching in for this ball, and Indiana, all they have to do is just sort of let them have a view of the ball. They get a hand on it. Well, they've had a lot of success so far in the game with those turnovers, so it builds more confidence. They keep going after it. Here you see the trap at half court. Good job by Joe Hillman. Hillman takes it right through in the mire. Off to Smith, almost lost it. Brian Sloan, little shuffle, no call. Meyer steps in, shoots, gets the ball, follow the ball, and there is an offensive foul against Meyer after the shot. The shot will count. Good move to the basket. Indiana's just gotten away from their offense, except for that play. Meyer takes it in strong, gets the shot. The foul went against him, so Notre Dame will be at the line. Now let's take a look again. There's Todd Meyer's second personal foul. From the inside, he goes up, and there's the foul. The ball rolls in. At the line will be Donald Royal, a 6'7 sophomore from New Orleans, Louisiana. 78% shooter, so he hits roughly at off 10. His third point, average is 7 through the first three games. 37-26, 11 point advantage as Bob Knight looks up at that scoreboard in the time remaining, 3.08 before he takes his team in for the halftime. Meyer clears the board. Gilman. Brian Sloan cross court to Smith. Meyer posted inside. Sloan double fake and a hold. David Rivers, that is his first foul. He has 12 points. Pass goes into Sloan. He sees he's covered up. It looked like he was going up for that shot and uh, kind of call a one and a one. But Indiana's offense has really slowed down, made Notre Dame play a little more defense. And Notre Dame has made the mistakes on defense that put Indiana up to the line. Indiana has not been sound at the line on the one and ones. And there's an example. Down the hard goes Royal. He hit very hard, and they're going to Ask somebody to come out and take a look at him. He appears to be all right, however. All right, here's the rebound with Meyer. Watch Meyer and Royal. The ball comes off, and uh, there you see Royal's feet going right up in the air, so he doesn't have anything below him. Right on that left shoulder, looks like he's okay. Well, yeah, that could have been dangerous. 37-26, 11-point lead. The Irish in control of the game and with the ball. Dan Rivers, look at this. Look at him handle that ball. Good defense by Delray. Did not let him inside that blue area. Kenny, or uh, Scott Hicks, no good. Rebound. No block out for Indiana. Joe Price just slides through for the two. Meyer. Sloan puts it up, misses the shot, crash on the boards by Joe Hillman. Sloan a little hesitant at that time, taking it in there, but Hillman not at all on that rebound. 39-28, we're inside two minutes. Rivers. And travel. Good pressure by Delray Brooks. Force the shuffle of the feet. Delray's done a very good job. He's got Rivers in a position where he's not been able to get in that blue area. And there you see the turnover. Hillman now trying to direct from outside. Steps up. They let him have the shot. He can't hit it. Goes for the ball. Bounces it off one knee. So Indiana makes the save. Good fake by Hillman. Back out to the top. Wants to take the shot. I think once he finds and gets his confidence, John, he'll be effective from the outside. Corner shot. That won't fall. And a foul on the rebound. Brian Sloan. 
is first. And they make the long walk with a minute 20 left in this first half. Better offense, better patience on offense that time. Joe with a little pressure on that shot, but he has passed up two or three shots. Let's take a look. Bryant's coming in for that rebound, slapping upside there for the foul. The line shooting will be Gary Bose. The 6'9 freshman with a one and one. It's a noisy 11,345 here this evening. And Price just off duels Meyer for the rebound. Bob Knight passively back in his seat to our right. Good defense by Del Rey. But Rivers gets a little move. Oh, he's so quick. He covers and scores. Smith is 6 6. Handles the ball well. Delray for won't fall. Delray takes it down. Higher control. Really a touch down the inside and a foul reaching in. Brian Sloan on the pass. A little too quick to go in and try to pick up the loose ball and commits his second foul. Made a good drive to the basket there. He should just go up with that shot. It's only about a 10-footer. He got tied up and forced the turnover. Notre Dame forced the turnover and then the foul. Indiana, after this game goes home, they will practice in preparation for another. This one, interstate rivalry with the Kentucky Wildcats this coming Saturday. But right now, it's the Irish at Notre Dame as Joe Price hits the first of a one-and-one. Now duck for Scott Hicks. As Digger Phelps with 41 seconds left protects his off guard who has two personal fouls. As a warning picking that third one up in the remaining time. And now Price with nine points already tries to add another and does. 43-28, a 15 point lead, largest of the game. And the Irish in control as Joe Hillman watches the tick of the clock. Back on top to Cree Smith. Spells his name K-R-E-I-G-H. Baseline. Smith. It won't fall. Rebound to Meyer. Good rebound. Good hustle inside that time. Meyer doing a good job controlling the board. Rivers steps back, shoots, scores. Oh, boy. He's putting on a performance tonight. 16 points in the first half. No good by Hillman as the buzzer sounds. Start second half action. There you see Indiana scoring in the first half. John Giome really the only salvation for the Hoosiers on, uh, on points in eight, this game. Seven out of eight from the field with 14 points. And then pretty balanced the rest of the way. Now no one in any real foul trouble. There's Rivers. What a what a phenomenal young man Dan is. Just plays so well, so quick. He has 16 points. He only averages 11. And uh, you saw Scott Hicks uh, right up there with him. Uh, Joe Price has 10 points as well. Ken Barlow has eight. Uh, Barlow played with three personal fouls. It's always been something to come up here. We're treated so graciously. This is an enthusiastic and, of course, very partisan uh, part of uh, the campus life at Notre Dame right here at the ANC Center. And, of course, right across the way, just on the other side of the Golden Dome, the big field where uh, the Fighting Irish play their football as well. A real enthusiasm in this area. Magnetic. Great fan support. Now, the basket that Indiana will be going for in the second half is the Notre Dame student section. They have five uh, sections of seats. And I noticed in the first half they did not sit down the entire first half they stand up from uh, from buzzer to buzzer and really get this uh, get this team going aren't you sort of glad you were a player at least you got to sit down once in a while you don't notice it when you're a player on the field but you just seem they're so loud as a player yeah. you get to sit down more than the fans do uh, I if I remember correctly back in 75 when you fellas uh, were undefeated until that loss in the regional to Kentucky oh, this was a tough win uh, yeah. Notre Dame that year we had a difficult time up here ended up winning that game by 10 uh, but it's very, very difficult to win here at Notre Dame. Well, when time's back in, it's going to be the Irish to control the ball on the alternate possession. It will be Dolan to toss it in. There you see last year's score, 80-72, Indiana with the, the victory. Now you see Delray Brooks right at half court, going to meet Rivers. He did a great job the first half on him. back in the lineup. Well, Delray staying low. Dolan with the ball. Hicks 
And outside it goes. Royal. Dockage overplaying him on the top side. His little shuffle. Hicks puts it up off the glass. There will be no basket. We have a foul before the shot. And it'll go against Indiana. Todd Meyer getting the first personal, his third, first of the second half. Alford came to help. That means Meyer has to pick up Hicks, and Hicks drove around him. Interesting statistic. Notre Dame led at halftime in last year's game, 32-25. Indiana outscored them 15, 55-40 in the second half to win the game. And the Hoosiers shot 64% for the contest. That's the kind of half Indiana needs. And now Notre Dame slowing things down a little bit. They've got uh, uh, a high offense, and they'll probably have Rivers control the ball as much as he can. Alford with Hicks starting to drive and then holding back. Knocked away. Top and good ball control, Delray Brooks. Good hands that time. Delray's got about two or three inches on Rivers. He snuffed that arm, got the ball from behind, and then just out muscled Rivers to the basket. Rivers with a hand shift, moves to the right side. Here's Hicks. Won't fall. Meyer controls the board. Good start, of the, good start of the half so far for Indiana. We talked about controlling that tempo. Notre Dame with just one shot. Indiana comes down, slows things down, looking for that good shot. Chiomi. Meyer. They're still chasing Alford. Hicks right on his shoulder. Alford just sliding across the baseline. Underneath is blocked away. That's two more for Chiomi. Good patience on offense. Simply move the ball around. Alfred still being dog man to man. The pass to Jomi inside. There you see it off the backboard. And there Bo Barlow really gets up on blocking that shot. 45-34. Indiana has whittled that lead. That halftime lead of 15 down to 11. Ryrie still maintaining control as Barlow fires and scores. Ken Barlow, who's certainly exercising this great dimension of shooting and speed that he has from outside. Delray Brooks, two more for Delray. There's Delray getting a little more confidence in that shot. Dockage is at the point, and that puts Alford and Brooks at the wings. Delray hit that shot. Hicks has it knocked out of his hand. Brooks. Jomi loses it off his knee. That's all right. That does not get any consternation out of Bob Knight at all. He stands up, claps his hands, and says, that's okay, let's keep it going. Stay right. in there. Delroy got the pass, but it had to come around to Mike's backside, forced that turnaround move, and went out of bounds. Rivers with four assists. And that's a turnover. Boy, that becomes a big basket now that uh, uh, that we lost that last time down the floor, but now a quick turnover. Indiana with the ball again. Delray right, Brooks, Michigan City Rogers, co Mr. Basketball last season. And you'll see a lot of action this year for Indiana. Bounces over. Dockage back to Brooks. Trying to set a screen for Alford. And Hicks is just so quick and sliding through. Alford forces it up. Whistle. Foul. Todd Meyer. No. Out of bounds. Meyer was on the, the line when he touched the ball. Indiana's intensity is a little bit more starting this second half as we play three and a half minutes. Barlow with a great fake pulled Mike off his feet for the third foul. Just got to stay down. Uh, North Indiana's only given up two points now with the 16 24 mark. The way they're going to win this game is on defense. He's got to let Barlow take that shot. There you see the obvious foul. Steve Alton back talking with his head coach. And they've coached him last year as a freshman and last summer as an Olympian as Barlow misses the first to two. 
Ken Barlow is not the best free throw shooter on this team. That honor belongs to Tim Kempton, 93%. Barlow, an 86%, makes the second. Pressure. Knocked away. Saved in the corner, and Dockage, anticipating that it had to come to Rivers, stepped into the passing lane. Ten seconds, Bob Knight shakes his head. The ball was deflected, touched by Notre Dame, but possession still belonged to Indiana. All right, that brought Coach Knight off the bench, right. saying it should have started a new 10 second. And the turnover gives the ball to Notre Dame. First action knocked away by Brooks. Seeing his first action, sent free. That generates here. And John, uh, we look back behind us. You had mentioned just a moment ago, the athletic director, while you played here at uh, Indiana, or not here, but at Indiana, Bill Orwig, and his lovely wife, seated back here and stands behind us. He lives up in Michigan now, semi-retired. I know he still plays a little golf, and I'm sure he came down yesterday to see Coach Knight. And it's Always glad to see Mr. Orwick here at the game supporting the IU team. The Irish with the ball and leading 48-36, a 12-point advantage. And a chance to add two more. They led by 15 at halftime. Rivers double team back to Barlow. Barlow way out high. That doesn't mean a thing. And Delray Brooks trying to slide between Meyer and Barlow. In covering Rivers, gets a hand in on the ball, but grabs an arm. Well, there you see him grabbing with the right arm. He's trying to go through a screen there. Obvious foul. Well, Brooks has really got his hands full, but Rivers has not been that effective starting this second half of play. Rebound to Brooks. He has Giomi on the left wing, but Notre Dame is back quickly. Alford. No good. Alfred frustrated by Hicks' pressure all night. His first clean shot, he misses. Now Notre Dame trying to set it up. Steve is 0 for 3 from the field. Whistle, foul inside. And Giomi, I believe, has picked up his fourth foul. Bob Knight immediately goes to his bench, and here's Brian Sloan. Number 45, McLeansboro, Illinois. There you see the double team. And they go inside the foul then against Giomi. Giomi really playing hard this year. Brian Sloan, number 45, for Giomi. Barlow, back outside, good pressure. They keep the ball on the right side. And David Rivers have countered, accounts for his 18th point off a good screen by Barlow and good ball motion. See, even on the press, Hicks is playing Alfred man-to-man, -man, so Steve needs to clear out, get under the basket, and let the other four players bring the ball up the floor. Turn around by Alfred, it's good. Yes, they count the basket. Double team by Dolan that time, and Alfred's posting up inside against Rivers. Even though Notre Dame helped, he was able to get that shot away. I had thought I heard a whistle at that end, but I did not. That's the reason for my hesitation. A foul. Let's wait for the official call. It goes against Dockage. His first. Notre Dame is really battling inside on those rebounds. You see how high Barlow is able to get up for the rebounds, and that's where Meyer and Sloan now. Indiana really with three guards in there. Meyer and Sloan are going to have to work on those rebounds. Steve Alford has been called to our attention has taken the five bandage off his left leg. Barlow free throw line good. The pressure, Delray Brooks finger roll, and a foul. And Brooks will go to the line as Kenny Hicks, or Scott Hicks rather, has picked up personal foul number three. 
Brian Sloan brings the ball inside. He got it to Meyer. And here's Delroy. Here's a good look at Hicks. Let's see what happens. Delroy C starts to break to the right. And so Hicks has to lean back to the left. Watch how Hicks is set. But now he's moving to the left. Great finger roll by Delroy. That's a good call. He'll be at the line. John, I think one of the reasons why so many times we have a tendency to misjudge the officials is we don't see some of the subtle moves of the body underneath in order to draw the foul or direct it one way or the other. Great shot by Delray. We got to look at those Notre Dame students. They wave their arms every time the opponent shoots a free throw in the second half. Delray did not let that bother. Brooks has seven. Indiana's back to within 11. 52-41 with 13-25 left in this game. Barlow off to Hicks. It's good. Scott Hicks with his first basket of the second half. And it's 54-41 as Meyer goes to Sloan in the corner. Hook shot. It's good by Meyer. Rather dockage to Sloan to Meyer. And Rivers really brought it up quick that time, but there's Delray. Good position. Get the docket. Takes it in. Scores! With that press, if Indiana can break it with that pass that we talked about instead of the dribble, that gives Indiana three on two or two on one. And they've been taking the ball to the basket the last two times down the floor. Short. Meyer pulls it off. Foul. Barlow gets the arm. That's his fourth foul. He's really been hot from that free throw line. Now with four fouls, it looks like Digger may have to go to the bench. The Digger cannot risk him now, John, with 12-19 remaining. Good help by Dockage that time, forced a missed shot. Look at the rebound, Dolan up high. Meyer with a one-hand rebound actually brought the ball right down into Barlow for the foul. Now they may try to go at Barlow. They can't get him out. Dockage shoots. The rebound pulled away by Dolan. There's Rivers again. Barlow at the line. Two more. Steele, Dolan, and Barlow can't shoot. Gives it to Rivers. And Rivers is so deft with control of the ball. Throws it away. And here's a leg race. It's going to be Indiana ball. And it'll be Indiana ball under their own offensive basket. As Price comes in for Barlow. We are back for the final 11-28 of this game. Notre Dame with a 13-point lead, 58-45. And statistically, John, uh, not everything is borne out by this 13-point margin. Indiana 7 of 10 in the second half, 70%. Notre Dame 6 of 11, 54. So Notre Dame still shooting well. Indiana has uh, picked up two points from that 15-point lead at halftime. But I think you can notice the difference in play on Indiana now in this second half, a much steadier uh, controlling the pace. And I can't say enough about Delray, the job he's done defensively against uh, Rivers. There you see the first half. Notre Dame had the advantage in shooting, and now Indiana here in the second. Indiana with Delray Brooks, Todd Meyer, Dan Dockett, Steve Alford, and Brian Sloan against this very tenacious pressure by Notre Dame. That's Scott Hicks inside the foul. Number 42, Jim Dolan, called for his second. It's Dolan, Price, Royal, Hicks, and Rivers. And it'll be Indiana to toss it in. That's only the third foul against Notre Dame in the second half. Brooks. You see the team fouls. Indiana five, Notre Dame three. Brooks steps up. Two more. Delray's got a lot of confidence now. You see how that defense on Rivers has got him really in the flow of the game, and now when he gets a chance to shoot on offense, nothing but net. Scott Hicks down to the baseline, trap, and it'll be out of bounds, Notre Dame. Sloan helped out that time, and Dockage on a double team, and Hicks had nowhere to go. Uh, it was good recognition, John, by Sloan. Price. 
Dan Rivers steps inside, shoots over Meyer, whistle, and Alford going for the loose ball, commits the foul as Dolan had the position. Steve with his third and first of the second half. That's the fifth against Indiana. Notre Dame's picked up on the rebounding in the second half. That's the shot one Rivers to take. Good defense by Meyer. He missed it, but Notre Dame with the inside position. Steve's got to come over the back. Dolan to Price outside. Forced that up, but look at this. And a travel. Good hustle by Royal, but he came down and got off his feet. That's a turnover. Again, he's got the inside position. If he hadn't fallen down, it's still Notre Dame's ball. There you see Digger. Just a tough break. Now watch. Looks like good position, but nobody's on Royal. Meyer went toward the basket instead of staying back with Royal. Sloan gets it up. Now they break the pressure and go back to their zone with a chase. Alford and a whistle, and Hicks has drawn the foul. On Scott, his fourth. Double pick that time. Meyer and Dockage down. Hicks got a little frustrated there. You see Jimmy Cruz calling Dockage over. And Alford came out on the pick and then the foul. Looks like Notre Dame wants to make a substitute. Dan yeah. Duff and Hicks is going to go out. So we may see Duff uh, be the chase now on Alford. Duff is a six-foot senior from Lincoln, Illinois. We saw him briefly in the first half. All right, Alford's going to play the point now. Try to set the other guys up. Won't fall. Crash to the boards. Here's Dockage. Pumps it back up. It won't fall. What a left-handed hook, and Dan's upset. Bob Knight is over there. Just says, come on, that's the hustle we want. Well, that's a good rebound, and that's a break Indiana needed. That ball goes in, and now you got a chance for a three-point play. Good form on Delray's part. Meyer crashes. Good fake by Dan here, and now you just need a little roll here. And it wouldn't go. He makes the first free throw. Indiana only down by 10 with 10 minutes to go. Rockets lets it fly. Two for two. He has eight points. All right, this is a critical part. Now 10 minutes left in the game. Indiana down by nine. And with, with five minutes to go, they'll need to cut that lead to three or four points. Good help by Meyer. Rivers wants to go. Delray won't let him back the duck. With Alford playing about four feet off. Dolan. Notre Dame in a slowdown now. They realize Indiana coming back on a little. This is the same type of offense Indiana runs. There's your release man in the middle. Indiana will just use their man-to-man -man defense to try to force Notre Dame into the turnover. Royal. Now Rivers back on top. Good hustle by Sloan trying to get the ball. Joe Price is back out, gets it back to Rivers. And a foul, reaching around Dockett, trying to make the steal. This is where Rivers can be dangerously effective, even with the left hand. Watch how he controls it. Just a good move. Dan reaches from behind, knocks the ball, but that's almost the automatic call there when you reach around the backside the official call you for reaching in Indiana's over the limit that puts Notre Dame at the line David Rivers a six foot freshman from Jersey City New Jersey with 18 points at the line shooting one and one Misses the second. And a whistle, a foul. And Brian Sloan is committed the personal. I believe they count the basket. All right, Rivers with a miss. But look, Notre Dame's got three guys on the inside position there. Good defense by Meyer, but Royal comes right in to take that ball again. You see, Brian got hit with an elbow right there in the jaw, call for the foul. And Royal was able to make that shot. Royal rolls it around for his seventh point, and it's a 62-49, back to a 13-point lead for the Irish, with 8.55 left in this game. 
Delray Brooks and a foul, and Rivers with his second. And only the fifth foul against Notre Dame in the second half. Uh, they say six. So the next foul will put Indiana at the line. Now Delray Brooks with Dockett. Off the point, Brooks looking underneath. Dockage to Meyer. Pops, shoots, scores. Todd Meyer. Indiana's got to look for that now. Look for Meyer on the inside and let him take that quick turnaround. It's only a four or five foot shot. Good chance he makes it foul. There's still plenty of time. Indiana has to take the control of this game away from one of them. There's a foul, and Dolan has picked up his third, coming across the shoulder of Todd Myers. Again, though, Notre Dame's got that extra shot in there. Rivers missed it. Probably took a bad shot on his first one out. Indiana's got to take that first rebound and get it down the floor. This time a foul, so uh, Meyer will be at the line. Well, there's another critical opportunity, and Indiana has to take advantage dead ball time in which to score, John. All right, Giomi now in the lineup. He'll take Brian Small's place. 7.58 to go. He's just going to have to play hard and see what happens. Scott Hicks and Ken Barlow back in for Notre Dame. The Irish will rest. Number 40, Joe Price and Donald Royal, number 15. and Dolan clears the board. And David Rivers just taking his time. Jump. Loose underneath. Yep. Scott Hicks. When the overplay came to Duff on the other side, Hicks was open. Dockett. And a travel. We have timeout in South Bend. You're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. It's best in regular season play, 15 against Northwestern. He had 19 against the Yugoslavian Zadar team. Now this is when he can be dangerous because it's a slow down type of offense for Notre Dame and they'll want him to try to handle the ball on the outside as much as possible. The final seven minutes and 20 seconds, Indiana down by 13, trying to renew some spark, some semblance of offense and ball control and board control as well as this pressure by the Irish has caused Indiana a lot of uncertainty bringing the ball up and then getting into its offense. Now the Irish with the ball a chance to extend this lead will bring it up full court. David Rivers with Delray Brooks playing off him. So quick a foot. Gets the assist. Knocked away and taken right away from Steve Alford. Rivers. He does it all. And a travel call against Barlow. It'll be Indiana ball. Rivers really quick on that turnover against Steve. Steve had a half a step lead on him, and all of a sudden Rivers had the ball again. Shot again a little too quickly that time, and Indiana was able to get the rebound. All right, it would be Brooks to bring it up. Now Hicks 
Kicks out high. Indiana scrambles for the ball. Tipped away. Good control and hustle by Dan Dockage to Giomi, and Dockage will bring it up. Pounds it. Notre Dame came out in the passing lane that time, and Dockage didn't have anything to do with it. But there you see Coach up. Yeah, got to be a little more under control and still get that quick shot away. Six minutes and 12 seconds to go. Indiana trails by 13. The last 25 minutes of play have belonged to Notre Dame. Rivers around the top to dump. They will play for the patient shot. looked over to the bench just sort of breathed a big deep sigh trying to catch his breath it's been a hard game both ways they have a switch duff is on Dell right now and they, steve alford is over on uh, rivers it's not intentional and steve would, is trying to get back to guard his own man but the time has not come to do that misses the shot sort of a wild shot thrown up by hicks Alford gets out of it, misses. Behind the back pass from Duff to Hicks, he'll score. Six-six fifty-one. Back to that halftime, fifteen-point lead. And the Irish smell of victory. Dockage. Meyer Giomi on a good cut. Good look by Meyer Giomi. Just sort of paused outside the lane and then made the break on the pass to Meyer. Good look inside that time, Giomi, all alone. Hicks forces it up. Rebound. Meyer has the ball and a foul on, I believe it's Hicks, and that is five on Scott Hicks. Hicks fouls out with 4.23 remaining as we look again. Hicks going to the basket. Meyer first puts his hands up and then comes back for the rebound. Good aggressive play. Hicks fouls out of the game. Now Notre Dame is in a position leading 66-53 where and if their big man Ken Barlow gets in trouble. And he has four fouls. They can just maintain control of this ball and run the clock down. With the ball staying with David Rivers as much as possible. Todd Meyer is back at the line. Shooting one and one. Meyer has eight. And he misses again. Indiana just fruitless on the boards on the one and one. Double team. The trap on the side, but he gets it out. Indiana really chasing the ball. Rivers makes the save. Back to him again. Now Duff. They'll give Rivers a breather. Duff and a blocking foul is called against Dolan. His fourth. Make the walk for a one and one. Well, Indiana's uh, been fortunate in the number of turnovers. They've actually forced the turnovers that time just on a pick. But forced Notre Dame some turnovers. Need to make the free throws. Indiana wants timeout with 3.52 left. You're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau and sure the pet band down in front of us and an exuberant Irish fan extolling the 66 53 lead that Notre Dame has with three minutes 52 seconds left in the game interesting note John Notre Dame's guards about scored Indiana's guards 43 17 a 26 point advantage there you see it Rivers is basically the person behind that Hicks has had a pretty good game and of course Barlow was hitting quite a few of those 15 footers right from the free throw line when the play resumes it will be Delray Brooks who has done an excellent job coming off the bench Hitting his last trip to the line on the, the free throw. 
He has nine points all in the second half and hits here for his 10th. Delray, very promising player. Getting good experience here. Well, exactly. This game will really mean a lot for Delray. He's gone against a guy like Rivers and played very well and has scored. And Rivers throws it away, leading to Royal, and is just too far out in front. Digger Phelps is up saying that's all right. It's good effort, but let's be more patient. Notre Dame is just not getting any shots at the basket. This is the perfect time for Indiana to make a comeback. 3.40 to go, down by 11. But they need to take advantage of these open shots. Behind the screen by Meyer. Dan Dockage with his 10 point. And now Indiana puts on some pressure. If anyone has to bring it up on the pressure, Duff is the man. Indiana can get back. And a foul. It's only the third on Delray, but Indiana's over the limit. And David Rivers, the 75% shooter, will go to the line with one bonus. Don't want this foul. Uh, it's, not, it's not a good foul because it stops the clock. It gives Rivers a chance to go to the free throw line. Notre Dame's been making those turnovers. You want to keep that pressure on him, let him run the clock down a little. Uh, but get somebody else beside Rivers at the line. David's first. He has 20 points, 20 big points. And I think we're going to be hearing a lot more of this freshman from Jersey City, New Jersey, John. Great player. There you see him, six or seven from the line. He's going to become a better shooter as time goes by, but he's really shown a great deal of ball handling skills, and that's exactly what you need for a point guard. Dockage with Brooks. Dockage takes it left side. He goes right into Meyer, and Meyer on goal and no room. Alford leans in, forces it up. Giomi tries to go for the loose ball, does get it. We have a jump ball. That should be Indiana ball on the possession. Here's the shot. Giomi just fighting hard for that ball. He came up with the jump and it gives to Indiana. All right, we're still waiting to set the inbounds. It'll be Dockage to trigger it in. Double team, they try to get it in. Back court, now finally comes to Meyer. Meyer to Brooks. Drives on Royal, scores! Delray Brooks. Delray with good effort, going up and over and almost through Donald Royal. 59, 68, 11-point lead. The Irish with the ball. 2.42 remaining. And Notre Dame realizing it has a great opportunity to stay undefeated by beating arch rival in the end. Rivers to Duff. And I can see why Digger says we want the ball and David Rivers' hands as much as we can possibly get them there. Steal. All right, the referee's part of the field. That's There's right. nothing you can do with that. That's, that's right. And here's Alfred on a steal. And a jump ball. This is going to belong to Notre Dame. It's just one of those breaks. Delray makes a great play. He goes for the ball, and the official's right there. And there you see him explaining it to Delray. That's just part of the game. Just can't worry about it and keep going after it. You see Coach Knight tell him that's okay. They know you made a great play, and the official was just happy to be there. And I think he also had a word for the official, says that's all right. You made a good call. Well, he's right on top of the play. Duck blocked by Giomi. Oh, what an effort by Giomi. Looked like Duff was all alone that time, and Mike came out of nowhere to block that shot. I tell you, I'm just more and more impressed, win or lose, by the way Mike has played the first three games, John. Well, he's really playing hard after it, and that's what that's what Coach Knight wants to see. I'm sure we'll see him in a in a big way at the Kentucky game Saturday. 149 remaining. This game should belong to Notre Dame. Duff inside, no shot. Barlow's back in. Four fouls. Reach in. Alford, his fourth foul. And that's going to send David Rivers back to the line. Rivers, just a, a tremendous talent with 21 points. His highest in season play, 15 against Northwestern. Average 
averaging 11 over the first three games. And he'll better that, of course, tonight. We're down the trip back to uh, Bloomington. It'll be a long ride. Time to get the, the bugs out of tonight's game. Get your mind started thinking about uh, Kentucky. Todd Meyer with 10. That's hard to do immediately after a loss. And I know exactly that's what Knight's going to want. Whistle, foul. It'll be on Meyer, on uh, Chiomi. And I believe that's the fifth on Mike. You said before, though, Chuck, what a what a great effort Mike's put forth. He is going to foul out, and the fouls early in the game cost him a little more playing time than he probably would have got. But I think you'll see. Look, there's 18 points. He shot very well from the field, and you'll see him in the Kentucky game. Well, the victory cheer has gone up here at Athletic and Convocation Center, and Digger Phelps is up telling him to be quiet. I wish we had a shot of this. He doesn't like it. Stand up. You see the graphics on him. He's five for five on the year. First point I have for Duff tonight. He's done a good job of relieving Rivers when the double team has come. He's been in a good position to get that ball and put the pressure off of Rivers. So Duff hits both. Delray Brooks and a foul. And Rivers with one of the rare times making uh, an attempt to steal the ball is called for the personal. That's his third. A little experience that time. There's no reason to try to go for a steal because you don't want that clock to stop. Digger calls him over to talk to him about that. Indiana's going to make some substitutions. Joe Hillman and Cree Smith for Indiana replacing Alford. And Dan Dockage, Alford sits down with only four points. I believe that's the lowest ever, John. Notre Dame State in that box and one. A zone defense by four players, one man on Alford the whole game. And Steve was not able to get the shots that he's usually able to. He's still trying to stay in the offense by coming off the picks, but Rivers and uh, Duff did a good job of staying right with him. Lowest output for Alford. On the other hand, the best game for Delray Brooks as a freshman. Now they're they're telling Rivers to get back away from the peripheral and free throw line. And the second is good. Delray with a great job tonight, 15 points. And it'll go down on the book as a loss. There's a hustle for the ball, and Brooks again with a hand on it. I think he's earned a starting lineup, John. He really has played well, aggressive. You know, everybody thought that all he could do was score, but he's shown us today the defense that he put on Rivers. A good, smart play by bringing the ball up the floor, so I think we'll see him a lot more also. And Hillman gets his shoulder into David Rivers, which will send Rivers back to the line. And Joe Hillman comes over to have a word with Bob Knight. David Rivers has improved upon his field goal shooting. He came into tonight's game with the the lowest average on his team, 33%. Misses his first free throw. Dolan gets the rebound. Indiana just uh, not getting the good block out, and Dolan muscles his way over Steve Isle. Up. Back to Rivers. We're down to one minute. Inside the final minute of the play. It'll be an Irish victory here in South Bend tonight. And Delray and Brooks trying to come around Rivers to get the ball foul stuff. Dan will go to the line. There's a good shot of Delray. That's his third foul, but the rest of the things he's done in the game uh, really give a lot of experience. told you is perfect from the stripe on the season. 
Two for two tonight. I think the officials have done an excellent job controlling this game, John. This is one of these kind, very physical off the boards that could have gotten out of control. They have. The ACC officials here did a good job. I think they knew this would be an explosive type game and have handled it very well. Duff is eight for eight on the season. Delray, there's Duff in the Meyer. Meyer turns. That soft shot bounces and won't go. That should be a basket for Indiana grabbing the net, but they're going to call it out of bounds. Indiana. Grabbing the net while the ball was on the rim. That's uh, either two points or a technical, or maybe both. Hillman outside. It won't fall. Duff looks right off his shoulder. Brooks is 6'4", Duff is 6 feet, and I think they're giving him a few inches there. 14, 13, the crowd's on its feet. 7, 6. That's it. The game is over. Coaches exchange their greetings. I'm sure there's some kind words between each of them at the moment because they're very good friends. Richard Digger Phelps and Robert Montgomery Knight. Good luck at them. Indiana was beaten here tonight and beaten soundly after taking an early lead in the game, then falling back to a tie 24-24. Final score, Notre Dame 74, Indiana 63. We'll return and check on the scoring and review tonight's game in just a minute.